Welcome. Uh, today I'm going to talk about TD Engine. Uh, it's a high performance cloud native and a simplified solution for time series data. My name is Sean Ely, and I, my role at TD Engine is head of product. I've been with TD Engine for uh, about a year, and my background is um, as a technical background, uh, professional electrical engineer in California also mechanical engineering and software development. So in today's presentation, I'm going to give an introduction to TD Engine, kind of what we do. I'll be talking about uh, how you can simplify your data historian architecture uh, with our TD Engine solution. And then also give some comparisons, differences and similarities between the engine and a relational kind of SQL database, as well as a comparison to Aviva Pi. Uh, from there, I'll kind of present a solution we have, a hybrid solution working with the Pi system, um, where you can expand the functionality of your Pi system um, without having to say rip and replace. Uh, it actually works really well together uh, with TD Engine as a secondary data store. Uh, from there, I can either give a demo if we want or do some Q&A, or we can end it early. So TD Engine, as I mentioned before, is a modern time series database. Um, it was built from day one uh, specifically for IoT. Uh, it was built as a distributed database and designed to scale horizontally to support billions of IoT devices while outperforming other time series databases in data ingestion, querying, and data compression. There are three flavors of TD Engine. Um, we are an open source um, software company. And so we've got a community version, which is free to use. Anyone can download it and get started. All the core features of our database are fully open sourced. That includes clustering, that includes uh, cloud native uh, deployment. And we're very popular. Uh, we've got over 20,000 stars on GitHub and uh, Today, we have over 214,000 running instances all across the world. That's in over 50 countries. So that's our open source community version. Um, we are also a business, so we've got paid solutions. We've got um, TD Engine Enterprise, um, which can be uh, installed on premises. That is enterprise grade TD Engine. It's got additional security, um, Nice, uh, essentially have features for an enterprise like data backup, data replication. Uh, it also comes with industrial interfaces for uh, getting data into TD Engine uh, and a very nice user interface uh, that makes it a lot easier to kind of manage it uh, instead of through um, your command line. With our TD Engine Enterprise, you also get professional technical support. And the third version of TD Engine uh, is essentially the same as TD Engine Enterprise on-prem, but we've got a fully managed uh, cloud solution. Uh, we have, uh, you can uh, deploy it on AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform. Uh, with TD Engine Cloud, you also get professional technical support. So I mentioned that TD Engine is high performance. We recently did a uh, industry accepted benchmarking report uh, or benchmarking test um, compared to some of the other uh, open source time series databases. Uh, so compared itself to our kind of main competitors, uh, Timescale, DB and InfluxDB. And especially for large data sets, uh, we outperform them significantly. So in terms of ingestion, um, and all of this testing was done uh, with about a 10 million device scenario. So fairly big kind of data set, but also a small fraction of what TD Engine is capable of ingesting. 
So in terms of ingestion rate, uh, we're about 10 times faster than some of our competitors. In terms of querying speed, so this is with kind of complex uh, time series based queries, uh, we're about 20 times faster. And uh, that can make a really big difference um, if you uh, say have a very large data set and um, have kind of complex queries, uh, you want it returned in milliseconds, not in minutes. Uh, also in data compression, we are significantly better than some of our competitors uh, compared to um, time scale. You can see there, um, what is that? Like 20 times, yeah, or even more than that, 25, 30 times uh, better compression. So we're gonna take up less disk space uh, uh, to compress the same data. Uh, we also have a lossless compression algorithm. So when we compress data, we're not dropping data or eliminating data, uh, just compressing uh, all of your raw data. In terms of the architecture of TD Engine, uh, our approach was to try to make the solution as simple and easy to use as possible. So our core product really is this, a time series database, but you always need uh, additional components in order to have a real kind of time series solution. Um, so in a kind of typical uh, architecture, you have your data source, uh, then you're gonna have some way of kind of ingesting it um, with like a message queue. Uh, uh, Kafka is one of the big, um, or one of the most popular providers of this. And you're going to need um, some sort of caching for um, operations. So you always want to know the, the latest value, the, the most recent value. Um, so you don't have to say query the database and take a while to get that back. You want to know it instantly. So Redis is often used for that. Uh, you need to store the data. So you're going to have a database, a time series database. And then if you want to do any kind of calculations, um, oftentimes you might use a kind of general purpose uh, stream processing uh, like Spark in order to do kind of real-time calculations. Um, then you're going to consume it some way in some sort of application, whether it's a kind of custom UI, whether it's um, some sort of um, uh, kind of off-the-shelf product. Uh, but you need some way to kind of view that data, either um, you, you, one of the BI suites or kind of visualization suites. That's kind of a typical architecture for time series data. So our approach was to include a lot of that functionality and really kind of optimize it for time series data. So from your data source, uh, we have um, kind of built-in messaging queues and data subscriptions. So uh, you can actually replace Kafka with TD Engine and it all comes included in one package. Um, Kafka's general purpose and same with Kafka, Redis and Spark, they're all general purpose. So uh, for time series data, TD Engine is actually uh, much better than uh, any of these solutions, but it can only handle time series data. So if you have kind of other relational data or graph data that, that really doesn't fit in a time series database, it doesn't have a timestamp, then you're gonna need some of these other solutions. And so we've got uh, connectors to Kafka if you're using Kafka. Uh, but for time series data, the caching, uh, stream processing, so kind of continuous queries, and your um, your kind of messaging queues and data subscriptions, it's all included. So you just write data to TD Engine, all the real-time processing and stream processing is handled by the database. Uh, and then you can just easily consume it with some of our um, programming um, uh, APIs uh, or some of our kind of third-party connectors. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to mention on the kind of simplified architecture. Uh, for any of you who've kind of installed um, uh, kind of some other historians that might have, you know, maybe uh, multiple install packages, maybe it takes like two weeks to kind of get up and running. Uh, it can be uh, very challenging kind of administer and set up, um, set up these other kind of historians, other databases. Uh, TD Engine is a single um, package. Uh, it's very small. It's about eight megabytes. 
And so very simple to kind of set up and administer. Uh, we also made that um, kind of that ad administration much simpler. So I'd like to compare TD Engine to a relational database. So when you are navigating in TD Engine, it looks a lot like a relational database, SQL database to users. So we use SQL, we support all of the kind of same behaviors of a uh, SQL database like MySQL or Microsoft SQL Server. Um, you've got the your where clause, you can do joins, you can do group buys, um, all the kind of functionality you'd have in the normal SQL database. You can also do within TD Engine. And we, in addition to storing your kind of uh, time series metrics, we are also storing metadata, um, which provides context around the, the time series metrics. So an example of that is, um, you know, maybe you have a smart meter that's measuring uh, voltage and current. Um, you're also gonna wanna know, you know, where is that smart meter located? Um, you know, is there um, kind of a unique idea associated with it? Are you gonna need, you might wanna know, okay, is it with a particular uh, manufacturing like part number? So there's all this kind of metadata that's associated with uh, with those metrics, and we store all of those as well. And those those metrics, um, or the, sorry, that um, metadata can be used in the SQL. So it can be used with uh, filtering and joins and group buys, uh, which makes it a lot more powerful for kind of consuming that data, and it provides a lot more context. So that's one way they kind of look the same. Uh, a major difference is TD Engine is purpose built for time series data, and we only work with time series data. So the index of every table is going to be your timestamp. And if you have relational data, uh, obviously a relational database is a much better solution. If you have time series data, TD Engine is going to be a much better solution. So the reason why TD Engine is a better solution for time series data um, is that the kind of administration, the, the data retention policies. So maybe you want to keep your data for a month. Maybe you want to keep it for uh, all time, 10 years. That's all handled by TD Engine. You just need to tell it how long you want to store that data. And we'll um, uh, offload any data or remove any data that's longer than that retention period. Um, the sharding, the partitioning, that's all handled automatically. So you don't have to worry about kind of the back end architecture of how that data is being stored in order to kind of optimize your queries. All the optimization is done by the database. Um, TD Engine is also a real-time database. So uh, a relational SQL database is gonna struggle uh, with kind of real-time operations. We've got, as I mentioned before, built-in caching, uh, stream processing, and data subscription. It all makes it, uh, working with data in flight. We can uh, work incredibly quick with data uh, and you can use it for your real-time applications. In addition to having SQL support, we also uh, extend kind of that SQL uh, querying to include time series functionality. Um, very useful and powerful for users to uh, say, uh, interpolate data to uh, do other types of kind of aggregates like time weighted average, uh, also for um, doing kind of roll up queries. So you can do kind of these windowed queries. Uh, we've got a, a number of different types of windows. So kind of these kind of continuous windows. So every say five minutes, or you can do like session based uh, queries or windows, uh, or you can do kind of event based where it's based on a condition. Uh, very useful kind of for uh, 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 querying uh, time series data. Uh, and it can really shorten your kind of SQL and less uh, custom um, queries need to be generated. Uh, and it's gonna be much faster as well. And then one of the main reasons you'd use times, uh, TD Engine for time series data is that the large and complex queries uh, the return in milliseconds, very, very fast, uh, very good with uh, uh, working with time series data. 
Uh, whereas in a kind of relational database, some of these large queries can take minutes to run uh, and it's very challenging to work with. To do another comparison, TD Engine against uh, Viva Pi. So both are time series historians. Uh, Pi, just like TD Engine, has built in caching. Uh, they call it the Pi snapshot. In TD Engine, it's called, uh, you can either do the last row or a last column type caching. Both have built in data context. So TD Engine has um, what we call tags, essentially labels um, for time series data, whereas Pi has their full kind of asset framework for adding that data context. Both have built in analytics. So you've got AF analytics in the Pi system, and TD Engine has their version in stream processing. You can do very similar functionality between the two. Pi has some comparative advantages over TD Engine. Uh, it's very well established. It's released over 40 years ago. They've got Asset Framework, which is a very popular tool, very powerful, very good for adding that data context. Um, and they've also got a very large collection of interface and adapters. So a lot of these are kind of uh, slight variations of each other. So if you got a SCADA system, there might be 10 or 20 different SKUs on that SCADA system. But they've got over 710 listed, so they make it very easy to get data in. And Pi uh, is not built for developers, uh, which is, I think, a positive for and a negative. Um, and so they really just have kind of a point and click user interface. Um, many people like that. In contrast, TD Engine has some comparative advantages over Pi. Um, TD Engine is a uh, kind of company and a product that is growing very rapidly. Uh, we have a very fast kind of development and release cycle and releasing kind of major features every month. Uh, in comparison, uh, the Pi solution, you know, is well established. They haven't really updated it since 2019. So it's a little bit more stagnant. TD Engine has uh, about 10 times the number of running instances compared to Pi. So we have over 214,000 running worldwide. And TD Engine also performs at about, I would estimate around 100 times the scale of Pi. Um, the largest uh, Pi instance I've heard of is, you know, around 10 million points. Uh, TD Engine has been tested at over a billion devices. And that's devices, not Pi points. So uh, you can actually have many more uh, points than that. And TD Engine is also built with developers in mind. So it's got very simple connectors for popular programming languages. And uh, we make it very easy to get data out of TD Engine, uh, whether that be to use it for, say, machine learning or uh, use it for uh, data sharing um, for any kind of consultants or any kind of third parties that might need your data. Uh, it's very simple. Within five minutes, you can share massive amounts of data from TD Engine. So with that in mind, uh, TD Engine went out and built a hybrid solution uh, to really expand uh, Pi systems with uh, TD Engine, which is a, a modern real-time data analytics platform. So I've got a diagram on the right, which shows kind of that, what that architecture look like. Um, to get this installed, it's a simple setup. Uh, you can install it, configure, and start streaming data from your Pi system to TD Engine in under an hour. It's a hybrid solution. So data is streamed to TD Engine and can be viewed and processed natively back within the Pi asset framework. Um, we do this uh, by having a connector, uh, which connect, has a kind of Pi data pipe or uh, AF data pipe that pulls data from uh, the Pi data archive or Pi AF respectively, and writes that data to TD Engine. You can write to TD Engine on-prem or you can write to uh, TD Engine Cloud, our managed solution. 
once that data is in TD Engine, uh, we build a custom data reference that can view data back within Pi, uh, specifically within Asset Framework. And so when it's back in Asset Framework, you can do a number of things with it. You can uh, naturally, you can see it in System Explorer. You can also um, consume it within Pi Vision. Pi Data Link also works. Uh, you can also use it in um, AF Analytics. It works just like a Pi Point. So once it's in the uh, referenced in Pi AF, you can use it just like a Pi Point. But that data is actually coming from TD Engine. And when you consume it like a Pi Point, there's actually no uh, points created in the Pi Data Archive. It's just coming from TD Engine. From our perspective, we wanted to make a, a solution that works for customers that um, isn't a rip and replace of, uh, of your Pi system. Instead, it is an extension. So uh, really targeting um, kind of use cases around uh, data centralization or data sharing. Um, in terms of the performance of the connector, it's uh, very scalable. Uh, we've tested it on um, 180,000 points, writing data every two seconds to TD Engine. Uh, it kind of easily handled this in terms of um, uh, resource consumption, uh, that volume, so 180,000 Pi points. It consumed less than 10% CPU on a four core machine and uh, around a gig of memory. So that's one connector and uh, you can install multiple connectors. So you could easily take, um, you'd easily take that and uh, add a bunch of connectors to get up to the millions of Pi points streaming real time to TD Engine. Um, one kind of use case we have uh, customers using, using TD Engine as a data centralization. So it's a, um, um, power producer um, and in the um, in the coal and uh, 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 mine's blinking um, kind of traditional generation field. Uh, they manage a bunch of power plants. They've got around 32 Pi servers. Uh, each of the Pi servers is in its own network. Um, and so it's, it's difficult to to manage all these different Pi servers, which are in different networks. Um, and there's no kind of centralization, central Pi server in order to uh, view all that data. So they've installed TD Engine with these connectors, put a connector next to each Pi server, then get all to TD Engine Cloud and are able to centralize and stream all of their data so that their operations can look at all of their uh, plants at the same time. Uh, without having to VPN into individual Pi servers in order to view that data. Another kind of benefit of bringing data to TD Engine as a kind of extension of your Pi server is that uh, you can leverage the powerful data sharing capabilities of TD Engine Cloud. Um, we have very fine-tuned control in our kind of user management system for uh, creating permissions either at the organization level or at say like your instance or database level. And then we also have something called um, topics, which is kind of a data subscription. And your topic can be created from an individual SQL query. So you could say, for example, select um, data from a you know, specific table, from a specific device. Uh, maybe you only want a couple columns, maybe you only want it for uh, the last two days or something. And you can uh, create that topic uh, and then you can add permissions on top of it. So you could give say certain consultants or certain uh, third parties access to that topic. And then you can share that data easily with them. They can consume it uh, either programmatically, we've got ways of uh, connecting to it, or they can consume it with TD Engine. So you can Kind of rep they can consume it with a database that kind of replicates that data to their database. Um, this kind of fine-tuned control allows you to really share specific information needed for either uh, kind of uh, different kind of regulatory uh, needs 
or for a particular business or kind of consulting needs without having to share your entire uh, data system and give um, some of these third parties keys to your uh, entire database. So that is the um, kind of short and sweet introduction to PD Engine. Let me stop sharing this. Let me show you what our cloud UI looks like because it's a little easier to kind of talk through it when I'm actually looking at TD Engine. You should see my screen now I'm on our homepage. If you go to um, cloud here on our homepage, uh, it is free to sign up. Um, anyone can explore and get to know TD Engine without inputting a credit card. I've already got an account, so I'll just dive into it. So in our kind of cloud interface, we've got T engine set up with databases. Um, and so you can create as many databases as you want. Um, within database, we have things called super tables. Um, and so a super table is a essentially a template and a collection of tables. Um, so here the super table is called meter template. I look at it. There's no data stored in the super table. Um, and so it just scores, stores the schema. And so here I've got um, four columns plus your timestamp, and I've got some metadata associated with it. Um, if you look at any of these um, kind of tables underneath, you've got uh, the timestamp and you've got the different uh, columns, uh, time series data associated with it. Um, if you wanted to just kind of look real quick. And I'm just kind of giving an overview and then I'll, I'll, I'll more directly address the question. You can just kind of do some simple charting within our um, uh, UI, kind of see the uh, current change over time. Uh, you can also, see, if you look at it, you can also see uh, what tags are associated with it. So I've just got unit of measure, so amps and voltage, and then the kind of unique ID associated with it. Um, these uh, tables, uh, we call them kind of sub tables because they're uh, um, um, created based off the super table. So uh, if you're kind of using batches, you know, one way of doing that would be, um, you know, if each batch is unique, you could have the, the batch ID, um, any other kind of metadata labels associated with it, um, um, kind of defined at your super table level. Um, you kind of add all the, the, the labels uh, as tags to it. If your batches have all the same data um, from, from run to run, you, you could use the same super table. Um, if you had different types of batches, you would have multiple kind of super tables as the schemas would be different. And then for each batch, depending on how many um, uh, how many metrics or how many different kind of devices you are storing data for, you might have kind of different um, super tables for the different devices, but you could always have the same batch ID as a label for all of them and create new uh, tables for each batch. So for example, you know, if this is a, um, you know, maybe you're measuring like an agitator or you're measuring some sort of motor, um, you might have that motor defined in a table. Uh, one of the labels with it would be your batch ID. Um, each time you do a new batch, you would create a new table um, with kind of a unique name for that table. And you'd have the, the name of the device that's being measured as a label, as well as your kind of batch ID. And then if you're going back and you want to look at it, you can actually say select um, based off the uh, super table, so you can um, let's see. So if I did uh, just click that real quick. So this is um, just selecting all the values from the super table. You can do a select star. Um, and this will return all data from every kind of sub device. And you can also add. I don't have um, the batch I any batch ID in there, but you could do like a where. Uh, batch ID equals like 
some some number, then you can select all the kind of similar measurements from devices with a specific batch, and you can kind of aggregate those together, or you can just select them all together. <clears throat> 